Music has always been known as a huge part of Star Wars. George Lucas went as far as saying he doesn't believe the franchise would exist without the music involved in the production. And what an episode we have for you guys today. For the first time, we could say we have a Star Wars composer on the show with us. We will introduce him in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Resistance Broadcast. I'm John Hoey. Thank you so much for joining us today. Love having guests and uh, excited to bring in ours in a minute. But first, let's bring in the crew. As always, James, Bainey, Lacey Giller, and guys, how are you? Welcome back. What's going on? Not a whole lot going on this week, as we know, like the news has been light, so all that stuff. But I'm I'm excited to get into this because you guys all know I love the music of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm super excited. I know nothing about music, so I am hoping that I learn a lot tonight because I know nothing. <laughs> yes. All right, this and is a quarter note. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, James. So I appreciate the talent like so much because I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the person who's going to tell us about some of that stuff right here is a composer. You will know his work from Forces of Destiny and more recently Galaxy of Adventures. He is an Emmy and Grammy nominated composer. It is Ryan Shore. Ryan, welcome to the show. Woo! Thanks so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. It is such a joy to be on the Resistance broadcast. Yay. Oh, we appreciate that so much. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> um, yes, so we wanted to basically start right out of the gate by saying, to the point, how did you get involved with Lucasfilm? Did you approach them? Did they find you? How did that all get started? How did that relationship develop? I was recommended to them um, for Forces of Destiny. Um, it, I was recommended by the animation company who was doing all the production. And they and I had worked together on some other projects, uh, like some advertising things that we were doing. And then they called me up and they said that they were working on a new series or a new project for Lucasfilm. Um, they were not able to tell me any details about it or what it is. <laughs> of course. But, but Sounds they, like Lucasfilm. Did, yeah. And they just said, um, would you be interested, you know, to be recommended? And I said, yes, of course. Um, and uh, then I had a conversation with one of the producers on the show. And um, it was actually kind of funny because... They didn't tell me a lot. Like, I didn't know it was Star Wars. And so they, they just asked me to send over some music that I had done before. And the direction that they gave was that they were looking for music that was adventure. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a musician, adventure could be so many different things. You know, it's like sure. Indiana mm -hmm. Jones is adventure. Yeah. Avatar is adventure. Yep. Um, you know, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean is adventure. I mean, these are all completely different scores. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, so I had a conversation with the producer and, uh, and I asked, you know, a few questions so that I could try and put together the right music to send over to them. Mm -hmm. Of course, in my mind, I'm thinking there's a possibility this could be Star Wars because it's Lucasfilm, but I didn't know. And, uh, and I remember I asked a question that I, I almost kind of kicked myself about asking, but I wanted to like <laughs> put, you know, the right music, you know, forth, you know, to show them. And so the one question I asked um, I said to them, um, you know, please don't let me, you know, please don't tell me anything I'm not supposed to know. Um, however, can you let me know if these stories take place on Earth? Ooh. And, <laughs> uh, and, and they said they do not take place on Earth. And I said, excellent. Like now I, I know everything I, <laughs> I would need to know to put together that reel because immediately I'm thinking, all right, we're talking about, you know, space. We're potentially talking about science fiction. Um, yeah. so I sent over music and then they, uh, they asked me to score the show and that's how I got on forces of destiny. And then from that came galaxy of adventures. That's well, awesome. Wow. That's so um, cool. I want to thank, uh, Evan Harris, one of our patrons who submitted that question, but real quick before we go on to, uh, the next thing here, I just want to ask you, like when you talk to somebody at Lucasfilm, is it always one person and is it like a filtration like process where it gets asked to one person, another person, and they kind of like tell you certain things or they say, don't ask that. How, how, is it very rigid? Did you feel? Uh, well, each project is different and there's different people that work on them. There's, there's certain commonality. There's certain producers or, um, you know, people who work in post-production who are common between the series. 
But sometimes the, the people who are offering the overall direction differ from series to series. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And... Um, but they're, everyone's great to work with. It's, it's, a, it's always a wonderful environment. It's always really positive. Um, and it's really creative. You know, I, 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 I love doing our, our meetings, you know, where we talk about the episodes and what the music should do or could do. And um, right. uh, it's, it's really a, 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 a wonderful working environment. I love it. Do you find that they are able to like give you the answer you're looking for when you say like, so what kind of a tone are you going for? They're like, um, like, I don't know, like adventure. Like, and you're like, that's not, (laughs) that's not what I'm looking for. Or or are they pretty good at being like, you know, maybe something like, uh, like this type of music that was used in this, this is exactly kind of the idea that we're going for Like temp tracks, but more like a conversational. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, each project is different. On Forces of Destiny, um, I don't recall if we had a temp score. Um, so mm-hmm. I think on, on those episodes, we just really talked about the episodes, the characters, the scenes. And and then I was sort of given more of a, a blue sky, you know, to compose mm-hmm. whatever I might want to compose. Um, Galaxy of Adventures is a little different. They do temp those. And... Um, and so that's really helpful because it, it lets me know what they've been listening to and what they like. And when there is mm-hmm. a temp score in there, um, because they've usually been living with it for some time, they have yeah. a lot of thoughts about it too, um, which is really helpful. So it's a great communication tool. So every project is a little different. So Understandable. we should have probably started with this. Are you a Star Wars fan? Yes, of course. <laughs> I grew up watching them and I've seen all the movies and yeah, I love it. Do you have a favorite character? Mm, let's go with Yoda. Yoda, nice. Um, nice. <laughs> so wise. Um, but it's it's really hard to say. I mean, all the characters are so iconic. And, and uh, you know, musically speaking, you know, all the themes that, that John Williams' composed are so iconic. So it's really hard to pick a favorite. Right. That's absolutely. maybe a that's maybe a better question. Is is there a specific theme in Star Wars that you feel ha- has pulled to your heart more than others? Oh, good question. Um, <clears throat> I like Leia's theme. I mean, I love all the themes. Um, I, sure. I love the harmony in Leia's theme, uh, the wide intervals in in the mm-hmm. uh, uh, in the composition. Um, you know, all of all of William's themes are are so strong and iconic and and there, as a composer, you know, when, when you have a chance to really delve into his themes, um, th- th- there's so much more to them, you know, that, that may even not meet the eye at first, you know, because mm-hmm. sometimes you, you want to use a theme and not necessarily play the entire theme. You know, you might hint at it or quote at it, you know, quote it yeah. or, you know, do an interpolation of it. And I find that when when you start doing that, that's where you really start seeing like how you know, how malleable the, the themes are. And um, something I, I always think about when I'm composing my own themes is how to compose a theme so that it's recognizable in as few notes as possible. So mm-hmm. that oh, way, wow. if, if you have a very short amount of time that you need to like quote that theme or hint at it, that um, you can do it with a, within a very short amount of time as opposed to needing to hear all 25 seconds of it in order to know it's that theme. Um, mm-hmm. And as I've delved in working with John Williams themes, they're, they're all so quotable and malleable and, and um, you know, you can really um, delve in with the leitmotif approach. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the classic Star Wars, like, that interval like from the root to the fifth is just like you only need two notes it's like the standard for that fifth jump you know dun, dun, and that's it like everybody's like oh he's probably about to sing star wars you know <laughs> totally, so, yeah, so, totally totally so standard yeah yeah um so i wanted to kind of ask you in terms of uh a sense of you know, I don't know, self security in the position being that it is, you know, John Williams obviously setting this huge shadow amongst all follow up composers, whether that be Michael G. Chino, who did the first movie uh, outside of Williams, Powell, Kevin Kiner, who did an animation. Have you spoken to any of these fellow composers about what it's like stepping in the shoes? Um, what, you know, 
feeling any sense of insecurity about being in that shadow? Is it different then? Because you've done a lot of other work, obviously, you know, from Girls Next Door doing a, a feature movie to Julie's Green Room, a TV series, other animated stuff. Is it different stepping into Star Wars? I imagine it is, but has there ever been any discussion between you and other composers about what it's like and developing your own identity in the galaxy? That's a great question. You know, I've not uh, answered that before. And, um, you know, it's funny. I, I, I have not. I've not spoken with the other composers about their experiences on Star Wars. Um, I've certainly listened to their music. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, some of those composers are, you know, um, friends, you know, composer friends where we might chat. Um, but, you know, it's funny. I, I have not asked any of them what their experiences were uh, or what they are, okay. you know, for, for currently scoring. Um, you know, with each, each series or, I mean, you can break it down even more on a, on a smaller level, you know, each scene that you're working on, um, you know, through discussions with the, with the producers and the filmmakers, um, you know, you sort of find the direction in the music direction of each one. And so that's really mostly what I'm thinking about when I'm scoring. Like I, I, I tend to not really think about, um, you know, the other movies or the other scores, you know, I really just try and think about these moments and how best to tell mm-hmm. them. Um, but that's mm-hmm. a really good question. I, you know, I, I should, I should, I should reach out to some of the composers <laughs> and say, Hey, what, there needs to be a Star experience? Wars composer club. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That'd be a cool <laughs> panel. Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> that, that would be neat. John, other questions? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm just looking <laughs> through here. On. You know, We're that, that on. one was a, a lot to swallow. So um, we do have one, uh, speaking of Yoda being one of your favorites, uh, one of our uh, Twitter followers, uh, Alderanian Rose, said, uh, Hi, Ryan, I absolutely loved your score for Yoda vs. Count Dooku in Galaxy of Adventures. Mm. It was that grand scale operatic chorus essence of the prequels turned to 11. So that's a Spinal Tap reference, I guess. <laughs> Just brilliant. My question is, how do you see your job when scoring? Is it to elicit certain emotions or is that just a byproduct? No, that's, that's the crux of it right there. Um, you mm-hmm. know, if, if, if I were to summarize or encapsulate um, the role of music in general in film or TV or games or VR. Um, and of course, music can serve in so many different functions. You know, it, it can help establish time and location and, you know, it can, you know, do foreshadowing or red herrings or, you know, amplify, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, whatever's happening in the scene or, or help clarify, you know, what's happening with story. But, um, but first and foremost, I feel like music really when it comes down to it is emotion. And so that that's really the first and foremost thing that I'm always thinking about is, you know, what, what would I like to feel when I'm watching these scenes or what would I like the audience to feel? And so, mm-hmm. and, and, and really when I'm composing that, that's the first thing that, that I do is, is I, I try to understand, you know, of course I try to understand what's happening in the scene and feel that myself and then try to translate that into music. So absolutely, it's all about emotion. Okay, and so just to be clear, are for both Forces of Destiny and Galaxy of Adventures, are you scoring a finished product? Do they say, this is it, now you got to put the juice behind this thing? Pretty finished. Um, usually the timings are locked, and so you know the edits are all in place. Um, because it's animation, there's often times where there's still... Um, finishing the animation. So I don't always see exactly what the finished result is. Sometimes, you know, I'm seeing animatics or drawings or mm-hmm. sketches or different ways they convey it. But, um, but it's usually pretty clear. And if it's not, then we just discuss it, you know, when, when we're looking at the scenes. No, oh, that's cool. So, so there's never, uh, there's never a time when they say, Hey, write us a good song. And then they go in and they like, you know, they've animated it, but like they cut, they edit to your score so that the beats and stuff are changing scenes or anything like that, because it's kind of a different thing than like a music video. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's, it's not often that they'll adjust the visuals to match the score. So it's usually mm-hmm. in the, in the other direction, you know, they lock the picture and then I, you know, like the way I almost like to think of it is that when you're writing an, an original score or you're writing music for a project, it's almost like being a tailor, you know, it's like you, 
you're making custom music that's you know exactly the right length and exactly the right timings that are happening in the same way a tailor might make a custom you know um, piece of clothing for somebody you know it's exactly mm-hmm. made for, for them do you ever find that it does go the other way like obviously for something like a music video but um, for when it comes to film or animated things like what you work on on occasion, I would say on, on pretty rare occasion, it does happen that, you know, when I'm working with filmmakers, they might say to me, um, hey, you know, if you ever want us to adjust the visuals, just let us know, you know, or if you need more time in this mm-hmm. moment or another. Um, but I don't think that's happened for any of the Star Wars um, projects. I think those, you know, those pictures and timings have all been locked. Um, but it sometimes does happen on other projects, you know, perhaps if there's, a montage or, you know, something where the, the music takes the four. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, you sort of do it on a case by case basis, but I would say most of the time, usually the picture is locked, all the timings are locked. And then I'm just composing to match those timings. Do you yeah. have a favorite, cool. do you have a favorite episode that you've worked on of either forces of destiny or galaxies of adventure, galaxy of adventure? Oh, that's a uh, that's a good question. I would have to go back and look at the episode list to <laughs> to remember. Um, but uh, you know, there there's uh, gosh, there's too many episodes. I have to have to take a look take a look at the list. No worries, um, there are you, a bunch. There's yeah, some, there there's isn't one that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, could you start with any particular like? Oh, I enjoyed working on an episode that featured Han because Han's awesome, or anything like that. <laughs> well, there is an episode that comes to mind where. Um, where you know Luke, it's a battle sequence, and and um, and we sort of treated it differently um, than it was done in the movie, where um, we used the uh, the Force theme. I'm trying to remember which episode it was, but it, we we approached it differently than what was in the movie, and I really loved this it. This is it, uh, Luke on Bespin fighting Vader. Uh, I don't think it's that one. Okay, uh, gosh, I'd have to look at the at the lit. It might be. Um, I'm sure if I went back or if you went back to find it, it would, it would be hopefully clear which one it is because, okay. you know, he's, he's, um, you know, he's flying and, um, basically we just ended up using the, the force theme in a spot that it wasn't before. And I really mm-hmm. loved it. It just sort of went from this huge action sequence where there's all of these things happening and ships exploding and, fl- you know, flying around. And, um, and then it suddenly, goes to the to the force theme and sort of everything else sort of washes away for a moment and it's just all about Luke and his internal you know channeling of the force. I wonder if it's the yeah. Han one that just came out where Han comes and saves Luke like supports his friends that's like the story it's like being for, there for your friends. I love that episode. During the Death Star oh, attacks. Yeah, where he like cuz it was such a cool perspective that you don't get to see in the movie and that's what mm-hmm. I really love is that this new content and stuff is showing you things that you didn't get to see kind of like behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And for to get that insight of like Han being like, "Ugh, I got to go back." And then he goes back and then you have that <laughs> yay moment. Like it was just awesome. See, I love that. I, th- that's one of the things that I'm really loving about our series is that you know, the people who are tuning in and listening, they're they're really noticing the details and mm-hmm. and it's so awesome to hear it because those are the things that we talk about when we're making them, you know, and, and, you know, we're, we, we really delve in and, and, you know, sometimes these episodes are, are short in length, but they're, they're very rich in content. So we're always trying to capture all these moments along the way. Hits you right in the feels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets you, it gets you in the feels. Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that's, that's a great point that you make because as, Concrete, established, and permanent as the original trilogy is, uh, you know, regardless of George Lucas's changes over the years, of course. But like thinking about being able to widen the spectrum of how we take them in, because like Lacey just brought up and you just acknowledged, uh, we see Han's point of view for the first time as he had left with his reward. And we get to see him and Chewie interact and Chewie kind of telling him like, you better go pack, you know? <laughs> so mm-hmm. you're at, you're, and, and you're guiding that along with the music. So you're adding to how we experience that because these are, you know, a part of the canon universe. And it's like, we get to see Han for the first time with when the whole time before that we're seeing, we're, we're still at the Death Star. So it's interesting that we get to widen the net a bit there. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Now, do you we ever did- find that there's a particular uh, set of pressure going into the Star Wars stuff as opposed to other mm-hmm. properties that you work on? 
There is and well, there is and there is, um, but <laughs> it's a, it. I've given a lot of thought to that because when when you're writing, you really don't want to be feeling any of that pressure. You know, you really don't want to be thinking about you know all the people who you know, who love the Star Wars universe. And, you know, yeah. if I thought about that when I was writing or when I am writing, um, it would it would to be so much head. pressure. Yeah, it'd get in your mm-hmm. head. And really all I want to be feeling and thinking about when I'm scoring the scenes is I really just want to be feeling and thinking about the scenes. And so um, I would say that that when I'm writing, I really do try and keep my head down and, and you know, keep my eyes on my own paper and, and just think about the scenes and the music and what we Mm -hmm. should be doing, you know, just sort of the work. I'm just thinking about the work, but when, when I'm done, there's often times where I sort of, you know, lift my head up and I, I, uh, you know, and I, and I realize, you know, this is star Wars, you know, this, this is a huge (laughs) legacy. And, you know, honestly, that's when I start to feel more of the pressure, but thankfully I don't always feel it when I'm, when I'm actually doing the work. Well, speaking of pressure, there's this big overhang <laughs> about... Oh my goodness, <laughs> segue. <laughs> no, the que- the, there's no pressure on the question here. Don't worry about that. It's a, the, there, the pressure though, in terms of secrecy, the, the big thing going around now is like that Lucasfilm and Star Wars is, is more secretive about their branding and about letting things leak than any other franchise that we know of or movies that we know of. So did you feel any sort of extra pressure having done this like you can't say this or you can't tell your grandma that you did this or like is it more pressure doing a star wars thing in terms of ndas and secrecy than than your other experiences is that fair to ask uh well you know so many projects have ndas and Mm -hmm. um and so you know of course i i I honor them um because that's you know what you have to do and it's the right thing to do so Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm sort of used to that, you know, where, where I'm working on projects and can't really talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, certainly I'm even more mindful of it, I guess, you know, cause it's star Wars and I know that, you know, there, there are probably people who would be interested to know, you know, what, what's, what's happening. Um, but, uh, (laughs) (laughs) but, uh, no, you know, in that regard, you know, every project really, you know, keeps their their privacy. So I'm just sort of used to keeping things close to the vest and, yeah. and talking about them when I'm able to. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's understandable. Um, mm-hmm. or is there, so, um, in terms of galaxy of adventure, since that's an existing you know project we know about, is there a slate of episodes that you've done that aren't released yet that we can expect? And is there anything you could tell us about that? Uh, there are because, you know, they're, they're, you know, we're, 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 uh, you know, we're still working, um, but Excellent. I can't comment <laughs> on, on what's the comment. Well, understandable. Well, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah, it's good oh, to yeah. know that, that you're working on stuff right now, though. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I should mention, you know, when it comes to Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures, um, I'm actually currently scoring two different series that are that are Galaxy of Adventures. So one of them is Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures, which I guess would be considered like, you know, the, the main proper series. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's also sort of an adjacent series that I'm doing at the same time that's called Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures Fun Facts. And yeah. oh. uh, I believe they're up on YouTube as well. Right. Is um, that the thing with the different. counting and stuff? I believe so, yeah. Oh, those are amazing. I no, love no, no, those. No, 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 not the counting one. Actually, not the yeah. counting one. Um, oh. I, the fun I know facts which one are the about. things that break down like the ships and all that. Oh, yeah, that's those right. are great too. Yeah. Um, so I know what you're talking about with the counting one, because I, I, yeah. I actually just saw that um, recently. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the the uh, Fun Facts series, um, you know, it's a whole other series. I, I believe it's up on YouTube. And, and the musical approach is actually completely different than what I do mm-hmm. for the, the, you know, the main Galaxy Adventures. Sure. Um, what I do for Fun Facts is, is way more electronic and contemporary. And, and um, there's actually very little, if maybe not at all orchestral uh, instruments in it. It's, it's all completely, um, you know, s- synths and very contemporary sounds. That's now, awesome. let me ask you this. This is a little bit of a, a nerdy question, I think, but like when you're, when you're doing the, um, the composing, when it comes to like the symphony orchestra stuff, are you using um, like VST stuff or are you ever given the opportunity to actually go and record with live instruments? 
Every project starts with the samples because I always want to mock everything up so that um, filmmakers can hear it. We can talk about the music, see what their feelings are. And mm -hmm. then it's just a question of whether we're, we'll record live. Um, either way, the, the first you know, work that I do is, is completely detailed, all done with samples. Um, like you were mentioning VST, um, you know, I have a, a, you know, a really large library of, of sounds that I can use. I would um, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So every project starts that way. And, and then it's just a question if we'll record live. So if we do record live, then you sort of begin this next entire phase of music production. So that's taking all the compositions, turning yeah. everything into sheet music, printed scores, yeah. printed parts, booking a recording session, the musicians, recording everything, then, uh, you know, uh, maybe doing any editing if you need to, and then mixing. So it's a whole sort of different post-production process for the music, but they all start, you know, in my studio uh, with samples. That's so Are you cool. your own engineer then too, when it comes to that? Uh, oftentimes, yeah, it, it depends. Um, it depends how much time I have. Um, sometimes I, I will bring in an engineer, even if I'm working with samples, um, just to have someone who's dedicated to mixing and, and making yeah. sure everything is, is sounding its best. But, but most of the time, not most of the time I, I don't bring in an engineer and, and if I'm doing everything in my own studio, then, then, uh, and there's no engineer, you know, who, who's doing a second pass on it. That's cool to hear. Like it, that gives me a new perspective on like how much of this stuff is being done by, you know, an individual instead of like a whole team. Like it's, it's you sitting there recording, engineering, doing all this, you know, it's, that's really awesome, man. Thanks. It's impressive. Most impressive as Darth Vader would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we, we talked about the present. Is there anything future wise that you could say, yes, I, I plan on doing future work with Lucasfilm? You don't have to say what it is, but do you see a future be, in, beyond Galaxy of Adventures uh, with them? Oh, that relationship continue? I certainly hope so, um, but uh, there's nothing that I'm able to comment on. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, now, I'm sure <laughs> you've heard, you know, there is Disney Plus coming out, so there's going to be tons of Star Wars series and a lot. They're expanding that in terms of expanding that net that we're talking about. There's going to be plenty more series and stuff like that. So I'm sure you've you've had your ear to the ground, knowing that the opportunities <laughs> are going to be growing. Especially knowing, in addition to that, John Williams is retiring after Episode Nine. Uh, well, yes, of course. I you know I, I certainly am. You know I follow the trades, and I uh, you know because I'm in touch with. Uh, producers at Lucasfilm. Sometimes, you know, I'll I'll know about things, um, and I just think it's wonderful, you know, that, that you know, with Disney Plus, that there are going to be all of these additional, you know, um, series and different types of projects that come out. Um, it, to me, it's just so fabulous that you know the original movie came out in '77, and it's still like just as strong and just as beloved, and you know, mm -hmm. it's just such a huge, vibrant future for it. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, <laughs> yeah. like we're talking about obviously the future projects and stuff like that, but with your current projects and past with Forces of Destiny, it must be so cool to know that you're introducing a whole new generation of fans to Star Wars. Like that's something so meaningful to to me, and I have nothing to do with the projects. I just watch them. Um, <laughs> that you know, new little kids are getting to watch these things, and this is their introduction to Star Wars. That must be like so fun to be a part of. It is. You know, I, I, have, I have nieces and nephews who are into Star Wars. They're so young and they already know all of it. Um, <laughs> it it's, it's, so, it's so great. Yeah, yeah, they're just so fun. I have two nephews. They're nine and eight, and uh, I've been showing them the new shows. So I'll let them know that you hear that music. Well, I spoke to that guy, and they'll get a kick out of it. So, <laughs> um, That's so awesome. now I, I have to try to. You know, you know, you can't reveal a lot, but I have to ask you this. This is probably the hardest question I'll ask you tonight before uh, <laughs> we start wrapping up here. I read on your Wikipedia page that doing work for the Oscars, you may or may not have worked with Lady Gaga. Did you work with Lady Gaga? And if so, <laughs> how much? Tell me as much as possible about what it's like to work with her. I thought you were just going to keep saying Lady Gaga because you said it like six times. <laughs> I'll say one more time, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga. I, I, 
I have been very fortunate, you know, to be able to work, um, you know, on on some of Lady Gaga's projects. Um, I've had a chance, I think maybe three times now that I, I've, I've been able to work on something that that she's doing. Um, and uh, the first one was a song that she had uh, written with Diane Warren uh, for a documentary. Um, and uh, um, I'm, wow, I'm trying to remember the, 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 the um, oh goodness. Um, she performed it at the Oscars, right? It was she the did, one with yeah. the piano and all the people on stage in white. Because I'm blanking right. too. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, Till it happens to you. <laughs> yes. Um, I, right. And um, so uh, a good friend of mine, Stephen O'Remus, uh, wrote the strings for that song. And so I was just uh, working with Stephen, you know, to help put together a recording session and, um, you know, got a chance to be there, you know, when, when uh, you know, they were working on the song. And, and it was so fantastic to watch Lady Gaga work. Uh, I was really impressed. You know, she, I mean, I'm not going to say anything that probably everyone wouldn't already know already, you know, from, from watching <laughs> her, you know, on TV and performances, but um, she plays the piano beautifully. She sings beautifully and she has, she has tremendous ideas. I, I was really impressed, you know, like she was able to work very quickly if she needed to on the spot. You know, she was listening to the song, coming up with ideas, coming up with ways of doing the vocals or harmonies. Um, I loved it wa- watching her do that. Um, and then I had a Very chance cool. to, um, when I was working on the Oscars, um, also with Stephen O'Remus, he was the music director and, and, uh, and I was his assistant music director on the show. And then, um, Lady Gaga, that was the year that Neil Patrick Harris was hosting the Oscars mm-hmm. and Lady Gaga performed, um, music from the sound of music. And oh, right. so... So that was tremendous, you know, watching how all that came together and how impeccably prepared she was for all of that. Um, And then the following year, um, as you mentioned, she was then nominated for um, uh, for an Oscar for Till It Happens to You. Um, And so then I got a chance to come back and and be a part of of helping to put that together. Um, Yeah, she's, she's absolutely fantastic. That's Here's awesome. one weird question is I know my uh, my wife got to work with Snoop one time and had to refer <laughs> to him as Mr. Dog uh, <laughs> when in his <laughs> presence. Does uh, she have anything like that? Does she go by her, you know, normal birth name or does she go by Miss Gaga? Or? I don't know. I I um, <laughs> I would hear people refer to his, uh, her as Gaga. Um, okay. okay. And yeah, so... Um, but I never spoke with her, you know, about how she might like to be addressed. So I just heard people <laughs> calling her Gaga. Because, well, I mean, her Oscar says Lady Gaga on it. That's what she got yeah, engraved on there it. There you go. Yeah. I, oh, I that's was right. I read this, that. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking this when I wa- was watching the credits. And I'm like, man, she's still doing the Lady Gaga thing. Like, Dwayne Johnson gave that up years ago. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, well, I don't know if she's ever going to switch off of that. Or no not, way. But, that's her. That's who she is. Well. Yeah. Uh, how many Star Wars podcasts have you been on that you could say you talked about Lady Gaga? So there you go, Ryan. <laughs> I'd one. love to see Lady Gaga in a Star Wars movie. Uh, but that would be cool. I think um, that's all cool. right, so I know you probably got to run. So um, I just want to say thanks for coming on. Um, before we do let you go, is there any other projects outside of Star Wars that you may want to plug? Or do you have any social medias you want to plug or any uh, website you'd like to plug for our listeners to go check you out? Um, thanks for asking. You know, I, I would love for, to encourage people to visit my site, ryanshore.com. And uh, there are some projects I'm working on, which I'm not able to mention um, yet. <laughs> okay. um, oh. However, um, there is a animated feature film that I recently scored, which I'm so proud of. It's called The Legend of Muay Thai, Nine Satra. It's all about Muay Thai fighting. And it's a... Uh, um, animated feature film. It was made um, in Thailand, and uh, it's a 96 minute film. And I uh, did a 96 minute orchestral score for it. Oh, wow! Um, as, as as well as an original song that is heard twice. Once in the montage, which is sort of has more of an orchestral treatment, so it sort of feels like it's cut from the same cloth of the score. And then um, a radio version that that I did, which is heard in the end credits, more like a, you know, a pop 
top mm-hmm. 40 treatment mm-hmm. of, of that song. Closing. And, yeah. That's and so I'm awesome. really excited to say that last weekend, um, I, well, uh, in Thailand, they have sort of like their version of the Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the Thai National Academy um, for film. And I'm super excited to say that I was nominated for best score and won uh, best <gasps> score at the Oh my God. That's awesome. Yes. Thank you. Um, wow. Is it so going to be film, distributed here at all? I'm really hoping so, and I think so. It, it's yes. already been released in theaters in in some countries in the south in Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. and um, and I'm now waiting to you know awaiting news for its North American release, which I'm hoping is going to be later oh this year. Oh my gosh, I'm so oh. excited! I love animation. See, all of a sudden, two minute shorts don't seem like anything at all. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're so we're gonna see you move up to the uh, the full length feature films here of Star Wars, right? Oh yeah, that he's gonna be at the Oscars <laughs> next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Forget Lady Gaga. Well, they do, need, they do need help with the Asian box office market, so maybe you can bridge <laughs> that gap for him, Ryan. <laughs> sure. I love it. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you got to run, so we really appreciate it. Uh, this has been awesome. And honestly, anytime you want to come back, we always tell our guests, you have a key to the resistance base. So anytime you'd like to come back, we'd love to have you back. Oh, man. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure talking with you guys, John, James, Lacey. I loved it. Awesome. All right, we Ryan. Thank you, you so much. We'll talk soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Well, that was great. Uh, That actually went uh, way more detailed and and better than I could have imagined. Uh, What do you guys think? I thought that was so cool. I I was surprised Lacey was able to keep up because she didn't know what a quarter note was. (laughs) I I don't know anything about music. I don't know how to read music. I don't know anything. So I was, you know what, to be honest, he lost me when you, when James, first of all, I think that was the best interaction I've seen James have with guests because he was so in his element. James, you were so in your element. It was so fun to watch where yeah. you were like, how about this and this? And I'm like, I have no What's idea what they're talking I about. I felt like I was like, out of my element because <laughs> it's such a different like version of music, you know? Oh, of course. Mm. But I feel like people that are into music yeah. or play instruments have this way of talking with each other. And I was just so out of it. You were like, so do you use this machine or this machine? And I was like, what is music? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I was trying to do the face where I'm like, mm hmm. Yo, right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Ryan, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about music, but you are wonderful and I love everything you said. If you're I listening. played saxophone for like nine years through marching band and I wasn't about to be like, so the tri- the chord progression the, 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 and the, the, the fifth level. And the, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the four days the, and the crescendos. <laughs> the question if if nobody did understand it had to do with is he creating, is he like scoring it on a computer? Like, oh, make this sound. It's oh, right. funny is you he, say that because I was literally going to be like, do you do this digitally or do you have someone record it? But then you asked it like super yeah. technical so then I didn't have to be right. the dumb one that was like, yeah. do you use a computer or do you use an instrument? Now, yeah, I, so I do want to think like garage band on yeah, crack, yeah, yeah, like yeah. is what he's doing basically. Yeah. So if, yeah. you, if you guys, whether you're a patron who submitted a question or a uh, listener who had submitted a question uh, or viewer who submitted a question, we peppered them in throughout, uh, but I didn't want to keep giving shout outs to names. So I just want to thank Adam Odell, uh, Shul Dog at J Shul Dog, Evan Harris, uh, Alderanian Rose, Don Boring, Don and Len Boring. Brown. Uh, we sort of got, you'll notice in the in the body of that interview, all of your uh, questions were in there. So thank you so much for those questions. Um, and again, you know, thank you, Ryan Shore, so much for coming on. Uh, you have a key to the base. You are officially our first Star Wars composer to be on the Resistance broadcast. So, And he could be an Oscar-winning one eventually. And he could be an yeah. Oscar-winning one eventually. He's been gra- Grammy-nominated, Emmy-nominated. Uh, the, the sky's the limit for this guy. And, you know, I do like that he appreciated us, you know, trying to get that information out of him about Star Wars stuff. And he was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> so I, I, I appreciate I, I get, I get the feeling something's coming. Uh, so do I. So do I. He, was cl- he, he, said, this, uh, he said, I can't comment on it. So that yeah, usually yeah. means yes. Yeah. So uh, it, it, I, I do that like, wasn't a, it wasn't a, oh, I, I hope that would be great. I'd love for yeah, them to ask yeah. me back. It yeah. was uh, no comment. No com- yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I appreciate you playing ball, Ryan. Uh, I know you, yeah. you probably know how this goes. So thank you so much. And uh, that, that was so cool. So, guys, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, comments, 
Let us know what you think. Uh, have you heard of Ryan before? If so, other stories you can tell us about him. Uh, any other feedback you want to give us about the episode? Uh, this was a very cool interview. It was, it was short. It was compact, but we really loved it. So um, thank you. Uh, make sure you guys do subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. Head to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Uh, we're starting at $2 a month for entry into that. And don't forget, guys, we're going to be covering all five days at Star Wars Celebration. We're going to be on location loading up so many videos to our Patreon page that only you'll be able to access. So if you're going to join our Patreon page, now is the time to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, Make sure you guys also head to StarWarsNewsNet.com. That is our website uh, for all of your latest news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. Uh, You guys can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing and editing over at Star Wars News Net. Uh, James Bainey? James Arthur Bainey? How about you? (laughs) Um, You can find me on Twitter, and technically I have an Instagram, but I don't ever post on it, so just follow me on Twitter (laughs) at Lacey (laughs) Guillory. I literally was just about to cut you off being like, hey, I always say that. Um, James does run our... our uh, Instagram page, the Resistance Broadcast, which is slowly but surely getting new followers. Because I noticed that because all of a sudden I'm getting new followers out of nowhere. I'm like, you want to see pictures of me and my kid? All right. Um, uh, so Myra Trunks is uh, James. Uh, Lacey, what about you? People can follow me on Twitter at Lacey Giller and where I talk about Star Wars and have a good time and geek out over Ryan Shore's work because I am a huge fan of Forces of Destiny with like the the, the stuff behind me. And yep. uh, galaxies of adventure. Is it galaxies or galaxy? Galaxy. It's one galaxy. I'm thinking of galaxy's edge and I'm taking right. the two right. and then right. I'm going galaxies of adventure. <laughs> right. Yeah, anyway, it was super ago, cool. So guys, I want to know far, far away. which episode of his work so far, wink, has been your favorite in the comments below. Yes. Um, I really do dig Galaxy of Adventures. I know people have been like... I love the Han episode. It was like my favorite one. I I, was like, like this is amazing. Anything with Han and Chewie, I've really liked. Mm -hmm. Because you really get that Um, them bickering and fighting like brothers kind of thing. Love it. Dude, the Luke versus Vader. That is really good too. That is really awesome. Yeah. This this is a good show. I... The, the, the Luke versus Vader one to me was like the thing that I think people started coming around and they're like, dude, I would, I would watch like all these movies. Like if they just did all of it in this animation style with like in this style of music and everything, like I think people really came around on that episode and, uh, started really like digging the episodes as they come out, you know, as they were being published. I wish, and this is my one wish for them. It has nothing to do actually with anything Ryan's done or (laughs) the actual episodes. I wish Hasbro would release action figures in the style of the show and not just throw their action figures into a new box. Hasbro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is my one wish. It is. They are. Cool. got called out. They are. They are cool looking. Maybe there's like two. Di- yeah. <laughs> called out. Son. I'm, t- I'm telling you, you look at the box. It's it's just their black series in a new box. Like yeah. I want the style of the show, please. Yeah. Really? I, yes. I thought, but don't they have all the toys in, or the like thermos that has like new artwork and stuff? Well, guys, well that might know. be the case. I'm talking about the action figures are <coughs> just the right, Black okay. Series Rebel or Black Series Rebels. Hey guys. Hey, Black Series Rebels. <laughs> the Black Series. Good, good name. Good by brand the way. recognition. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. Can I just say, I always say that. I'm always like Black Series Rebels. <coughs> uh, hey guys, what's up? Congrats on your wedding, Alex. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just those figures in a new box. It's yeah. stupid. <laughs> well, they have more. He, I don't know if that was known or not, but he said there's a new slate of episodes they're working on right now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's more stuff coming from this, which is very please, cool. Kylo, please, Kylo, please, please. I have heard that they are going. They they're probably going to be branching out to the prequels more and uh, doing may, maybe maybe I bet after episode nine they'll do sequel stuff. They'll wait till episode <laughs> nine's done. Um, all right, guys, we got to get out of here because we got more work to do. Because the resistance never sleeps. I'm exhausted. When, I mean, I, I don't sleep because I have a son, a new son, but you know, whatever. But Hey, Lacey, you're right. These are the Black Series figures. 
All right, guys. So <laughs> uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Weird. We're going to be Sometimes back with I'm you right. guys Weird. on Monday morning. So enjoy your weekends, and we'll see you guys with another episode as we march closer to celebration. We hope we see as many of you as possible. But until then, see you Monday. This is the Resistance Broadcast. See you around, kids. <laughs> Bye, on. Um.